So I do 90% of my gillhead fishing on the open coast of Cornwall, on the north coast. And the real advantage for me of fishing out here over, say, fishing the estuaries is just the beautiful environments that you're fishing in. The open coast is so much more dynamic and high energy than, than your average estuary. It's, uh, it's much more exhilarating for me. The sort of uh, the crashing of the waves, you know, the boiling of the sea, gulls and formers circling overhead, towering cliffs. I really feel at home out here and uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, I like estuary fishing too, but for me, the open coast is just that much more exciting. Hi, my name is Ben Conway. I've been fishing since I was about eight years old, uh, sea fishing since I was about 13, and I've been fishing for gilthead bream for about 10 years now. So as I've said, most of my practical experience comes from fishing the north coast of Cornwall, but uh, I've learned a lot over the years and hopefully some of it would apply to other areas of the country where you can catch gilts from the open shore. The north Cornwall coast is a very high energy environment. We're open to the Atlantic here. It's very rocky, you know, there's lots of mussels and big sandy bays, but it's the little coves that I tend to concentrate on the most, like um, your little inlets, little bays that are surrounded by rocks and you've got little outcrops of rocks here and there. For me, that's gilthead country. And um, there's a number of ways that you can approach fish in those kinds of places. Um, I typically, if I can get away with it, use two rods. And I'll position baits at sort of different likely looking areas. Um, but if it's really weedy or if the conditions are really tough, I'll go down to one rod and hold it because I find a lot of the tangles that you get on the bottom using like a running ledger rig or something like that are caused by the back and forth of the swell, sort of um, moving your baits around, moving the snood up the line, that sort of thing. And you don't seem to get as much of that if you hold the rod and react to the pulls and the, like, the, the, everything will stay in position a little bit better. You don't seem to tangle as much. So there's an advantage in doing that if the sea's really turbulent. Typically what I do is I'd try and find features to fish. Now, if you think about what gillheads eat, when you gut one, they're full of mussel shells or quite often they've got green weed in too. So if you think about the places where you're likely to find them, and if you can see spots where there are mussels, then they're always worth a cast alongside. If you've got like a rock sticking out of the sand with mussels on, and it's got a depression all around the base of it, that is a pucker feature for gillhead bream. Um, if you can get your bait sort of on the, on the drop off of that little little bowl around the bottom of the rock then you know they're gilt head honey holes they really are they're the sort of gift that keeps on giving if you can find one of those and uh, it doesn't change throughout the season that's another thing because of the high energy environment the sands are always shifting around this coast so while not one spot might fish great one year it might not the next because the sands come in and filled it all in or you know the holes have changed it's it's completely different every year so what you've got to do on this coast at least is go around and have a look look at sort of low tide and look for all these places look for places where you're you know that look good for a, a fish coming and exploring looking for mussels and that sort of thing and it, you won't go far wrong like that another method you can use is like the odd speculative cast out long um, it's completely different to fishing the features just bang one out there see what happens and what I quite often do if I'm doing that is just inch it back here and there. Uh, Martin Larkin does this all the time. Casts it right out and sort of scoots it back along the bottom. And uh, he said to me in the estuaries, uh, often it's those times when he's scooting it along the bottom, bang, a bream's been watching it and it's just gone for it as soon as it started moving. So that's a really good tactic that works on the open shore too. Another one you can try is quite often the best feature out there is the one you're stood on. Uh, so drop a bait under your feet, like right in tight to the rocks. I've had loads of bream, like literally a rod length out. 
and it's really exciting when they take because quite often they're like <laughs> right out to sea before you know it like thrilling stuff so try the ranges fish the features try out long you know try a variety of things and see what works and once you do find what works generally as long as the features don't change uh, the bream will keep will stay in that habit and you'll be able to catch them you know time after time after time so it's worth doing the homework finding out what works and uh, exploiting it properly So this is my favourite rod for gilt head fishing. It's a Conaflex Bass Bandit. A really old design, but it has all the qualities I think are important in a gilt head rod. Pretty stiff butt, fair bit through the middle, and a soft tip. So like a medium fast action. Uh, the soft tip for me is pretty important. In the past, I'm sure I've had fish drop the bait when they felt the resistance of a stiffer tip. So the uh, soft tip just gives me that extra confidence that I'll get that little bit of extra leeway and the fish will take the bait confidently. You can use any sort of bass, estuary, carp rod that you like for open shore gilt head fishing. Anything that casts sort of two to four ounces is fine. But I'd always suggest that that soft tip is important just to give yourself every chance of getting a confident take. So reel wise, you can use any reel that has a sort of bait runner or quick drag facility on it. Uh, that's really important if you're fishing out of the rest using two rods and you're not always paying attention to your rod um, because even a small one can drag your rod in if, you, if your drag's not set. So having that feature is pretty important, I think. If you're fishing just one rod and holding it, it's not an issue, but definitely if you're going to be taking your eyes off your rod, you need a bait run your runner or a quick drag on your reel. Uh, this is what I use. This is a Shimano 6000 OC bait runner. I've been using these for years and I've never had any problems with them so I've never seen any reason to change. I fill these up with 15 pound Daiwa sensor and a 30 pound shock leader. The shock leader is not just for casting, it's for landing fish as well. A lot of the places I fish have rocks and muscle covered rocks close in and your line can take a real beating when you're landing a fish. So having that extra strong line on there just gives me a lot more confidence when it comes to landing a fish. How's about that? Beautiful gilt head. Caught on frozen razor. Gave a hell of an account for itself, like absolutely storming away. Had weed all up the line, <laughs> weed on the shock leader knot. Ended up having to hand line it in, but uh, got it there in the end. The hook fell out just as I landed it. So very lucky to get this one, I think. But oh, what a fish, absolutely delighted. What a fantastic species these fish are. Bait wise, what you're looking at is more or less what you use in the estuaries. Peeler crabs, lugworm, uh, razor clam, ragworm, that sort of thing. There's a lot of things that will work, mussels. Um, gillheads are quite Catholic feeders. They'll, they'll have a go at more or less anything. I mean, I've heard people catch them on sand eel and mackerel. On the continent, they catch them on metal jigs. So when they're really feeding, they'll have a go. But um, if you go along with something like peeler crab, razorfish, lugworm, you can't really go far wrong with that. These are the rigs I use. I generally use just two on the open coast. One is a running ledger with the running part made on about three feet of 30 pound line with a swivel either end. Um, this gives your lead a nice strong bit of line to run on and also gives you a bolt rig effect from the swivel at the end. So it's quite handy. The other rig I use is one that I got from fishing with Martin Larkin a year ago. Um, it's a running Paternoster. These are the bits for it. Um, Lark generally uses just one hook on his rig, so I've tended to copy that. And he does use the coloured beads, and I think they do work. Uh, I, I seem to find the green ones better than the orange, I don't know why. But um, sometimes I've got two, two ways of tying the hook on here. I've got um, the hook tied on conventionally, and I've got one snelled here. 
And I like to try things like this every now and then. If the gilts are giving me a hard time and I'm missing bites, I'll, I will try things like this just to see if it makes a difference. Sometimes it does. Um, so onto leads now. These are the leads I tend to use the most, pyramid leads, and a four and a three ounce. I like these because they're a plain lead, but they hold very well. The other style of lead I like to use is um, just a plain lead hammered flat. I like these because they don't roll. Um, they tend to slide across the bottom. So I use these in a gentler sea um, where I, I don't need a pyramid lead to hold, but I don't want a rolling lead either. I just want the, the bait to sit nicely, be able to move it if I want to. And the flat lead is perfect for that. And the last thing, which is an absolute essential, is a hook file. The uh, open coast environment is very punishing on hook points. So um, you need to be making sure that your hooks are as pin sharp as you can possibly get them because otherwise they won't penetrate in the gilt head's mouth. So the hook file, if for me, is an absolutely essential bit of kit. I do find that some people, when they, they take up this style, they, they struggle a little bit. And I think the main reason for that is because they fish the wrong conditions. Um, conditions are kind of king for this kind of fishing, uh, at least in my area anyway. You're looking for a bit of surf, a little bit of color in the water, that sort of green fizzy water that bass lure anglers go crazy about, that's good gilt head water. Um, when, you, when it's flat and calm, you can still catch them sometimes, but I rarely bother going when it's like that these days because even though they might be there and you might even see them, um, they, they, know, they seem to know all about you and they don't want to know. Um, so when there's that little bit of surf, um, that sort of little tinge of colour in the water, there's sand being disturbed from the bottom, that's when you're looking good for some bream. Safety is key when you're fishing in any marine environment, but particularly on the open coast, it's potentially extremely hazardous. So I take a number of measures to keep myself as safe as possible. I use a life jacket. This is a crew saver auto inflate model. It's really good. Like I've never had any problems with it. They're very comfortable, these jackets. So um, you hardly know you're wearing it. I don't really see any reason not to wear one because this could really help you out if you get in a sticky situation. I take a rope to a lot of the marks I fish. Um, some of them have pretty challenging climbs, so I tend to put the rope in whether I think I'm gonna need it or not. Um, you never know what can happen on this coast. The weather can change like that. Uh, one minute will be fine. You'll be, the dry rocks are really friendly, and then uh, a little bit of drizzle will come and it'll just turn to an ice rink. So having a rope can really help you get out of a tight spot. It's better to have it and not need it the need it and not have it, I say. So I would definitely suggest taking a rope if you're going to an unfamiliar area that's likely to have any sort of climbing attached to it. And thirdly, it's what I've got on my feet. These are a pair of Skechers boots with Supertrack studs in. Uh, if you've never worn studded boots rock fishing before, it's an absolute revelation how much extra grip they give you and how much more sure-footed and confident you'll feel on the rocks. Uh, I recommend everyone use these for rock fishing because for me, they're an absolute game changer and I wouldn't go fishing without them now. So my gilt head bream fishing journey started in about 2012, 2013. Uh, I started fishing the foul estuary and I had quite a lot of small fish, but I felt the power of gilt head bream and I thought these fish are brilliant, this is for me. Um, it was quite widely known at the time that a few guys in my local area were having some success on the open shore fishing for bream. And I was always interested in that, but it wasn't until I bumped into one of them in a local tackle shop, an angler called Keith Burnett. Uh, Keith was a very successful shore angler, very prolific. He's more into fly fishing these days now, I think, but I'm sure if he wanted to, he'd pick back up again, no problem. He's that kind of angler. And um, I must have caught Keith on a good day because he gave me pretty much chapter and verse on what you need to do to find and catch gilthead bream on the open shore around here. Uh, he told me what sort of features to look for, what baits to use, presentation, how they behave, that sort of thing. Um, so I thank Keith for that. That was a brilliant foundation and it's, uh, it's ba the basics of what I've based my fishing on 
ever since really, it's worked out really well for me. Uh, I hit the ground running from then on um, and I think sort of 2014 was my best year. I had like lots of good fish that year and my best one which was just over six pounds. I've not managed to better that yet um, but I, I'm always hopeful but uh, the real strength of open shore gilthead fishing is that there's lots of fish in that sort of three to five pound category. You stand a very good chance of getting getting four pounders, you know, and um, those are, are always a good sporting size to catch. I enjoy those fish. So um, that's the real advantage of, of um, fishing on the open shore. You get quite a nice average size, um, although you don't seem to get those fish in the next next sort of bracket up. It's very rare for anyone even to encounter one of those really big gilt heads from the open shore, never like, mind catch one. Uh, they are there. Uh, commercials and spear fishermen do catch them into double figures, but for some reason they're, you know, extremely rare on rod and line in my area. Um, but hopefully one day somebody will figure it out and uh, I hope they tell me how to do it as well. <laughs> I think a lot of people who um, traditionally bass fished in the surf or fished from rock marks for bass and are now finding them hard to come by, um, they would get a lot of value out of gilthead fishing on the open shore because the style is broadly similar and it, it scratches a similar sort of itch. I mean, gilthead's are really a, a good news species for sea angling because they're spreading all around the country. Uh, every year you seem to see a, you know, a big fish coming from a new area and it's really exciting, it's really great to see. And uh, they're prolific breeders. Um, you don't need to feel guilty about knocking one on the head to take home to eat, and they are fantastic eating, by the way. So um, don't feel guilty about that at all. They're just a really positive thing for, for shore fishing and um, at a time when we, we sort of really need it. So um, I, I think more people should get on board and start fishing for them because they're just brilliant fun. So I've been lucky enough to meet some really great people through Guilthead Angling over the years and a couple of them have really helped me out. Uh, the first was obviously Keith Burnett whose advice uh, provided the foundation that my fishing is still based on to this day. He really helped me to hit the ground running so thanks Keith that was that was brilliant advice. Uh, the second is Martin Larkin who I got to fish with a bit last year and that was it's super inspiring to see how passionate and dedicated Larks is to his fishing and uh, what he doesn't know about Gilthead Bream, you, mean, you could write that on the back of a postage stamp, the guy is an absolute fountain of knowledge when it comes to all things gilts and other species to boot. He's just a fantastic angler and it's a really valuable experience to fish with him. Uh, I hope that this video can help some of you guys out with open coast fishing for Gilthead Bream. It's a really fantastic form of angling. There's nothing quite like it. I absolutely love it and uh, I hope that you will too.